say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Waiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. We're the farmers. This is our kitchen. And if you look in front of us, you'll see some very colorful things. Pippas, mm -hmm. corn, Lots jalapenos, of stuff. Uh, tomatoes, beans. If anybody knows Mrs. Farmer, they know that she likes... Mexican food. Mexican food or Mexican flavored food. That's right. Now, I don't claim to be a Mexican chef, but I'll tell you, somebody who was, was Naibi. Oh, that's right. Our friend Naibi. She came and visited one time and made cow's head tacos. I remember that. It was very different, very delicious. Very different. But, you know, culturally, we're not used to eyeballs and brains. I and got an eyeball, like so did Kelly. We got eyeballs and so brains. So it was very interesting. But we thank Naibi for her little tips That's right. along the way. So what we decided to do today, because it's cool outside, was a soup. Something else that I have noticed, you and Kelly and my daughters, y'all like cheese. We do. This is so cheesy, you're not going to be able to stand this it. This soup. I think you can soup. handle it? I can handle it. So I'm going to start with some olive oil. If you turn our burner on. So we're going to make chicken enchilada soup. You so have to keep your leftover chicken. Yes, you do. Now that's a smoked chicken. You can tell part of that looks pink. That's not because it's not done. That's the process of smoking. Right. So we're going to call this smoked chicken enchilada soup. Yum. Can you dig it? I like that. All right. So what we're going to do, Mrs. Farmer, if you'll take that onion. Okay. And I think we're going to use a whole onion. Can I use I'll, my chopper? You can use your chopper. All right. And I'll use my ulu knife and I'll cut up some peppers. Use a little red and a little green for color. And we're just going to cut this into little strips. Now, I'm giving you the choice, Nikki. I okay. would normally put some jalapenos in here. I'd rather you not. <laughs> Is that okay? So, so we're not going to do that. The, or I can't Because she it. asked me so sweetly not to. You can look at them. We would normally take the seeds out and put some of these in, but we're not going to do How that. How about you just set it by the soup bowl? I'll, I'll, put I, it no, in I'll yours. garnish it. Okay. I'll garnish I like that. It. And we're going to take some pieces of beautiful bell pepper. Can I chop away? You can. I beat you. So what smells better than onions and peppers? Nothing. Sauteing Nothing. slowly in olive oil. I'll tell you what, I think we got enough temperature. It looks, looks a little wavy in there. Let's see what happens, see if we get sizzle. Uh -huh. Yes. So you can dump those onions if you want. All right, you want all of them? Yeah. This is soup. All right. You gotta have lots of onions in your soup. So we're going to make a homemade enchilada sauce. We've done it so many times, there's no sense in shooting it again. So let's show where we originally made this, up at the cabin. Show you how you can make your own enchilada sauce. It's just as good as store-bought, if not better. Enchilada sauce, you can buy it or you can make it. Now you think about it, it's red, red colored. Yeah. If you do the red enchilada sauce. What is the thing that makes it that color? It's the chili powder. Really? That's your red color. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with five tablespoons of oil mm -hmm. and five tablespoons of flour as your base. Then we're going to put that over the fire, cook that down for just about a minute, and then start adding the ingredients. Five tablespoons of chili powder. You want a little salt to taste. One teaspoon of cumin. And the last thing we do is we're going to put about four, four and a half cups of chicken stock in there. We're going to cut up some fresh oregano. We'll take, I don't know, half a tablespoon of that. Two cloves of garlic. Let's put in that very fine, cut that up. Then we're gonna reduce the heat and simmer that till it thickens up just a bit. Then we set it aside. Then we're ready to start stacking yep. and making our wonderful, wonderful meal here. I actually printed the recipe off today and made it again. You know, it's, it's funny. We, we end up going... Going online. 
going on our own site to figure out what we're doing here. You know, years ago we did a deer processing video when I was with Kentucky Field. And that thing went all over the United States, all over the world. People were looking at how to process a deer. And there were folks even in Australia who said, well, it's, deer's not too far from a kangaroo. They were using it to, to cut kangaroo up. I still pull that out and look oh, at yeah. it. And so that's the great thing about all the information out there. You can find all kinds of stuff nowadays. I'll tell you what, if you'll go ahead and get me about three cloves of garlic ready, there's nothing that smells quite like that. Oh, that's, that's a wonderful, delicious. wonderful smell. But meanwhile, if we'll, we'll take our garlic press, I'm gonna make you a little side place here. Let me put a little more. You got it pretty you don't wanna, You don't wanna get this too hot and you don't ever wanna get your garlic too hot. That smells so good. Garlic's good for you. That's right. Onion's good for you. So now, I didn't measure anything, so we're gonna kinda guess here. You don't have to be exact on any of this. But obviously, you want some black beans in there. That's and right. We had some leftover black beans. We also have Tomatoes, those are just diced tomatoes. Mm -hmm. We have corn, 10 to 12 ounces of each, yeah. maybe a little bit more. Yeah. So that is where I want it. Beans, Beans. tomatoes, corn. How pretty, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Now we're gonna come in with some stock, some chicken stock. And we're gonna probably put three cups. Now, being that our chicken is already cooked, and being that our beans are already cooked, and our corn is already frozen. We get to eat quick. It's not gonna take very okay. long. I like it. Now, this would be a great dish for the crock pot if, oh, if yeah. your chicken wasn't done. Mm -hmm. If you could cut me up those pieces of chicken, okay. and just little bite-sized pieces. I'll do it. Soup-sized pieces, I guess you could say. And we're not gonna bring that up to a crazy boil, but a low boil. Now, remember our enchilada sauce we talked about? Here's what's gonna That's give right. this its taste. Homemade. Homemade, oh, and I'm probably gonna go 10 ounces on that. Oh, there's the smell we're looking for. This is that kind of soup that it, as it sits every day, it oh, tastes a little better. It does. It gets better and better, I think, if there's any left. Now, the thing is, as we go along, we can taste and see what we need. You know, it's easy to put something in, it's hard to take it out. So you That's don't right. wanna go crazy on anything. How these pieces look. Those are looking good. You know, the thing about chicken is we like the thighs. Yes, we do. We love the thighs. So the breast meat's what's always left over. We had breast meats in this. So what, what do we have? Two, I, two small breasts? Yeah, and I had a little, a part of a thigh was left. A part of a thigh, was, yeah. okay. And we love the back meat. That's right. So that's probably a cup and a half. Oh, at least. My, I bet it's two cups. Maybe that's two a cups. lot of chicken. Oh, yeah. look at that, look at that, look at that. Ooh. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this all mixed up and see where it's at taste-wise. You're Really standout flavors in this are cumin. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite. And that was in the enchilada sauce. That's right. So that's gonna flavor that to some degree, but you need to taste the salt mm -hmm. and the black pepper. Maybe some more chili powder. It depends on what we How got going like on here. When this comes to a little rolling boil, I'm gonna taste it and see where we're at. And then we'll add accordingly. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more chicken broth in there because this is pretty thick. And when I add the cheese, it's really gonna thicken up. Then we're gonna use just a little bit of bouillon, chicken bouillon cube form, or you can actually buy some of it that's, buy some base. Mm-hmm, that's yummy. And there's, there's some Mexican ones on the market that just really give it a wonderful flavor. And we're gonna put some cumin in, a little more. Maybe just a little more chili powder. Delicious. Yeah. All right, now I don't want that to get too crazy on me because we've got that already cooked chicken in there. I don't want it to fall apart to nothing. So we're gonna let that cook for a little while. Now, if Raul was here, you know what he would do? Sugar. He would sneak in his pocket of his apron, and he would put just a little bit. Anytime that he put something salty in, he would come back with a little sugar. I think that's a very good idea. I like that idea. Oh, that's getting close right there. So, we're gonna let that cook on low. Just gonna let that go for a while. Now, we're gonna need another pan. This time of year, mm -hmm. When the red buds start blooming, time for your red bud jelly. That's right. What else is going on out on the water? You like to crappie fish. That is a pretty good clue that the crappie are mm -hmm. biting. That's right. That water needs to get up to 55 degrees in the bottom. Mm -hmm. When it gets around 55, 60 degrees, those crappie, they start mating. That's right. And they start eating and they start biting. Mm -hmm. And what happens when they bite? We bite back. That's right. And guess what I found in the freezer? What? From last year. I thought we had eaten all that crappie. And it's still delicious. And usually we try to eat that fish mm -hmm. within a year. It'll keep longer. 
But when I saw that, I thought, okay, I'm going to make something out of crappie. Oh, yeah. Nick and I went to Percy Priest Lake in Tennessee last year, and we spent the better part of the day trying to find them. Then when we found them, we got some big ones. Here's we some pictures fun. of that. And here's a picture of next dog, Dean. He went with you. He went with us. He's you not small. I stayed home because I was babysitting Montana at that time. Yes. Montana had just, so I couldn't go fishing with you. And if you'll remember, Montana was our poor little bottle-fed sheep. Mm -hmm. That needed a lot of attention. He needed a whole lot of attention. And once he, he got raised up, we have found out that a lot of times a bottle-raised sheep mm -hmm. can kind of grow up and be kind of... A little bit rough. A little bit rough sometimes, and he did that. A friend of ours wanted him so bad, so she took him. Sherry has him. And she's got him, and he's, I think she, he was so protective of her, he would just knock anybody Yes, over. he would. Now, we got Spot out, out here, Spot knows, and he is the sweetest. He They'll is let sweet. let you scratch his ears. He is sweet. But something happens when you bottle feed them. Sometimes they can get cranky once they get a little bit older. And I bet he's big now. I'll bet he, he is. is. Yeah, I bet he's a big boy. All right, so here we are with our soup getting ready to go, and we talked about crappie. Let's get another pan out and get okay. that crappie going. I have pondered this thing called fishing for years, and there's no way to monetarily justify any fishing trip. There is no fish fillet that's worth the time and effort used to catch dinner. So why do we plan for days or even weeks, spend money on tackle, gas up our cars and boats, and head out to the fishing hole? Well, the answer struck me like lightning this weekend while kayaking and fly fishing on beautiful Douglas Lake in Tennessee. It was beginning to get dark. Nature's symphony was just getting cranked up. Katie Dids began their droning song and crickets joined in with their upbeat chorus and a tree frog played his washboard percussion. The gentle breeze caused the water to rhythmically lap onto the rocks. I glanced out to the nearby mountaintop and watched a smoky cloud roll across the top then sink into the valley below. The smell of a distant campfire was pleasantly processed by my olfactory receptors. A roll cast just to the left of a large branch was greeted by the unmistakable sound of a large bluegill plowing into my popper. And just for a minute, I remembered a time when I was standing on a bank of some pond with my father. Before I knew about bills and adult responsibilities, before I knew the ugliness that could exist in this world, before I knew that people could hate and hurt other folks. Come on, Dad, just one more cast. The only way he could sway me to leave was to remind me that it was getting dark and that Mom had made her famous chocolate cake with fudge icing from scratch. As we walked up the hill to Dad's 64 Chevy pickup, which would later become my first vehicle, that same symphony was playing in the background. And the reason we fish, friends, is for that minute. And that minute is worth every shiny penny. Now, while my pan is heating up here, I'm thinking about the end result. I'm excited. Now, my end result for these crappie takis, crappie taki. Crappie taki. Crappie, crop, crapo taco. Crapo taco, I like that. You got some flour on your okay. head. Crapo taco. I like that. Crapo taco. <laughs> so, I'm thinking the end result, your end result, you like a sweeter on your fish. It's yes. almost a tartar sauce. So we're gonna take some mayonnaise, sour cream, and some of our sweet pickles. Mm -hmm. You know, let's put a little dill in there too. That's a good idea. Just a little bit good of idea. dill. And just take that in there, and she's gonna chop that up, and it makes a wonderful Perfect type sauce. tartar sauce. Instead of lettuce, we're gonna use cabbage and some carrots. Mm -hmm. So it just has a little crunch. Yes. Then put whatever sauce you want. I'm gonna probably put something with a little red color and a little heat in there. You can on yours. On top of that. That's right, I won't on mine, but, but you can on yours. But I know what yours are gonna end up okay. with. So here's what we're gonna do. Two parts cornmeal, one part flour. That's where I like to start all my breading. So in order to flavor this, now you like kind of a sweet and savory, mm -hmm. so we're gonna use my... Your dry rub. Dry rub. I mix that for you? And I'm probably, you know what, I'm gonna take the top off. I think we need a lot of it. I wanna get some color in there. Yes. I, want, I wanna see the color. Now you could use any kind of seasoning you want. You wanna be able to smell it and taste it in your batter. Something else we're gonna do is add just a little bit of onion powder, a little bit of garlic powder, and a little bit of salt. If you can smell it in your breading. You know it's good. And I know my oil's hot enough. I'm gonna get some nasty fingers. Ah, oh, there we go. No use getting any hurry. No use overdoing them, getting them done on the outside, not done on the inside. Now I'm gonna do one more before I clean my hands up. It's so wispy, little corn. Cooking with Bob Ross. 
I watched him as a kid. Did you watch him? I did. I enjoyed watching there him. There was something. I mean, when you watch him nowadays, you know, it, it, he's kind of got a cult following. But he's PBS's guy. You know, what's funny, as a kid, this is terrible. But we knew about PBS and what shows were on, what time during the day. If we would get a substitute teacher, you know what happened? We would say, oh, no, Mrs. Harrison always lets us watch See and Say, which was like first grade level. Yeah. <laughs> it was a black and white show. But we'd do it just because we could watch PBS. That's right. And then after that, we'd say, you know, hey, oh, at 3 o'clock, Mrs. Harrison always lets us watch The Electric Company. The Electric Company. So you watch TV all day when you had a sub. Going to turn on the power. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I learned a lot from PBS mm -hmm. as a kid. Remember Mr. Rogers? That's right. I love Mr. Rogers. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Our fish is really cooking good. Mm -hmm. It's looking really good. Can you smell it? I can smell it. I want some. I can smell it. You're going to need to make more because I'm going to have to taste oh, those no. before the time. Ah. I think I have about a half a cup of sour cream. And here's two tablespoons of salad dressing. And I'm going to grab... Sweet pickles. I'm just going to load them up and let them chop up in there. I'm going to put some dill weed in there. Probably three quarters of a tablespoon. All right. Looks pretty good. Perfect. Beautiful. Yum. I could just eat the sauce. That <laughs> good. Oh, it's good. Ooh, yummy. That's better than any store-bought tartar sauce, and it's oh, that yeah. quick. So I'm going to look at this. It looks like some of this. Getting done. Getting mighty close. And I know you're going to ask about this wonderful fish scooper upper spatula that you can grab. We found that online somewhere, so just look online. All right, now there's something about the smell of pan fish frying, I don't oh, know, yeah. there's magic. There's magic in there. Maybe. Each one of those is about enough for one taco. Yeah. Or you could just load it up if you wanted to. So now our soup, which we have tested and tried, and it's right where it needs to be, the right amount of heat. Not too much for Mrs. Farmer. That's right. If you want more, you could add your own cayenne or some You can do that. Sauce. You can do that. Okay, let's put that cheese in there. All right. One piece at a time. And let that get all gooey and melty in there. Again, don't forget to set your cream cheese out. That'd get room temperature. Beautiful. Good. Now that's gonna start to thicken up and get beautiful. And while we're doing this, if you will, take your cheese grater. Okay. And we've got some pepper jack cheese. All right, now this is gonna give a little more heat. All right, now let's get that cheddar in there. And we're gonna save a little bit of cheese for the end. And the tacos, too. Oh, 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 oh. oh. And look how that's thickening up. Nice. Now I'm going to use most of that cheddar. Now you want to use a block of cheese as opposed to the pre-grated stuff. Do you want all of this? Yep, every bit of it. I know you do. I know, I like it. Now you can put as much cheese as you want in there. And you saw how much that was. I would say probably, what, a half a cup? Oh, yeah. So we got cream cheese, cheddar cheese, and some pepper jack. Now look what we've got. Look at the color here. Looks good. Now if you will, Take this, take me some cilantro, mm -hmm. um, strip the leaves off, and really chop that up for me. Look at the soup. Look at the color. I know. I can't wait. You know it's right. Mm -hmm. When is that color? You see the beans, you see the corn, oh, you see all the wonderful flavors in it. So we're going to break away. When you come back, you're going to see us make a beautiful plate. Taco for you, not hot. Taco okay. for me, hot. Okay. Watch what happens right here. Go ahead. Can I try the soup? Yep. <laughs> mm. She loves Oh, that's good. Now, that's see, good for dipping. Oh, yeah. Now, that's even. Oh, like a, that's why I got these chips out. So even if you wanted a little, I like that little idea. bread. So it's a dipping almost. It's such a good soup. Mm. Ma, 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 ma. Cheesy. Tiny bit of heat for you. Delicious. If it was me, there'd be flame shooting out good. my nostrils. Well, I noticed these tacos. One is hot. I don't want that one's you. I want this one. Right, I want you to try that. You try. Yeah, you try, you try your try hot, the hot one. Yes, I want and the normal. Yours. I want the normal taco. Tell me what you think. It's not crunchy or anything, is mm. it? 
Mm. Sound like an earthquake just happened. <laughs> really good. Let me take a bite of mine. <laughs> oh, wow. Messy but delicious. All right, the fish is amazing. I could just eat the, the fish with that sauce. To me, this is all perfect. I love it. Mm. The cabbage is mm. good. So, Miss Farmer, don't you think maybe it'd be nice to hear some music? Yes, it would be nice to hear music. You know, we did a show called Homemade Jam, and we're getting back to presenting some artists very shortly out of the studio over there. So, occasionally, we're going to have some artists on who come through our studio, and we're going to show you these artists. Let's see who we can pull out of our artist's bag today. I have a good idea. What? Sarah Beth. Yeah, I like that idea. Where I'm going in this mess I know it seems like we ain't talked in forever well, I call upon your name But I really must confess it's all in vain How they fall upon your children just as gentle as they do. But the flood keeps on coming, and I can't tell where I'm headed. You wouldn't lead me to the storm, and then not see me through the hurricane. Clouds roll down and settle right on top of the trees and then it rains. Lord, how it rains. Where the winds change are coming. And there's nothing can be done The clouds have died have gathered And they're blocking out the sun You told me peace be still And then heal me with a touch And I hang my head in shame Because I don't pray as much as I complain Lord, how it rains Just exactly as she pleases Farms try to bargain Begging for it from Jesus The clouds roll down and settle Right on top of the trees And then it rains Lord, how it rains could use a little break in the weather. I just go to show you, you don't have to get on an airplane, fly to Mexico. That's right. To have good food. Now this is not authentic Mexican, but it's got the flavors therein. Delish. And just with those few flavors, look what we've got. We're gonna have to turn the camera off and really jump into this. Because it's gonna be messy, I can tell. <laughs> I don't want anybody to it's see me. It's really messy. <laughs> but, Mrs. Farmer, yes. if you were in, say, Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Every weekend. Somebody, you're, you're buying stuff at the fresh market. That's right. Somebody says, Mrs. Farmer, where in the world can I find your recipes? You would tell them. TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. There's a gazillion recipes on That's there. That's right. And we also have a Facebook page with a bunch of folks on there who talk to each other and we have fun and we're all nice to each other. That's right. It's a rare 
thing nowadays mm -hmm. for people to be nice. That's one rule on our page. That's right. Be nice to each other. How would you get there though? Is it hard to navigate? It is very hard to hit like. Wow. Yeah. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Come visit us over there. Mrs. Farmer, my mouth is watering. Me too. So I guess we should eat, but before we go, I want to tell you that it's all about good times, good friends, and super really good eats. So let's just eat. I like the fish. To order a cookbook, email timfarmerck at gmail.com. We have been catering for a lot of years, and I wanted everything to have a specific taste. Therefore, I had to come up with my own products. Right. A dry rub, chow chow, and our barbecue sauce are something that we use in all our catering gigs. I developed this barbecue sauce that is not the th really thick, syrupy stuff that you get. This is, has more of a natural, it's got some pepper and onion flavor, and you can actually see the particulates in there. You know, a lot of people are asking what we use our dry rub on. Now, obviously, pork and chicken are two of the more common things. Also, we've been using on our corn on the cob with butter. That is I'm telling you, this That's stuff wonderful. with potatoes is fantastic. So 40 years in the making, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Dry Rub. Mm -hmm.